Lords, I beg leave to ask a question of which I have given private notice. The question is as follows. To ask His Majesty's Government what immediate assistance with life-saving and recovery and with long-term rebuilding and construction efforts they are offering to the Government of Turkey and to non-governmental organisations following the recent earthquakes. My Lords, I am sure I speak for all in Your Lordship's House in offering condolences to all those impacted and affected by this tragedy in Turkey and Syria. Our thoughts and prayers are with all. Our embassy in Ankara is in direct contact with Turkish authorities and supporting British nationals. We are also in contact with British humanitarian workers in Syria. Um, I can share with your Lordships that the United Kingdom is sending immediate support to Turkey, including a team of 76 search and rescue specialists as part of our international search and rescue team who are being dispatched to Turkey as I speak. They will have equipment and rescue dogs. In Syria, the UK-aided, aid-funded White Helmets have also been mobilised, and we are working very closely with UN partners to understand the direct impact and options. My Lords, uh, I'm really grateful, as always, to the Minister for his helpful response, and I think we all share his uh, views uh, in sending condolences uh, to those who have lost their lives and uh, to the relatives. Uh, who've, of those who have lost their lives. Uh, however, this is not ju just one, but two of the strongest earthquakes ever in an area which is already uh, coping with hundreds of thousands of refugees. So we need to uh, do a great deal. I'm glad to hear that the rescue effort, the immediate rescue effort, has been mobilised. Can he tell us? What NGOs are involved? Will they be involved with that? When will they leave uh, the United Kingdom for Turkey? What kind of help they are going to give? Uh, will there be uh, specialised equipment, uh, as well as men? Do we provide uh, dogs or other uh, assistance? Uh, and can he say uh, what skilled, uh, what equipment uh, will be provided? We are able to provide. This is going to be a huge effort. It needs international support from every organization, every country. There's everything that we should be doing, everything that we can do, we should be doing. We can't underestimate the devastation that has taken place, the death and destruction in Turkey. And I, I hope that we will get a clear assurance uh, that the United Kingdom government irrespective of the cuts that we've seen, sadly, in the development budget, will make sure that as much money and as much help is available to Turkey as we can do. My Lords, I agree with the noble Lord, and uh, let me assure him he asked some specific questions. We're working directly with the United Nations. I hope to speak with the UN coordinator, Mohammed uh, Hadi, later today within the context of Syria, but communications are quite challenging, certainly in Syria. He's, of course, right to say what we have deployed immediately. A UK international search and rescue team, as I said, will be deployed today and will commence life-saving activity within the critical 72 hours. Um, they will depart via a charter flight from Birmingham at 1800 today and will arrive in Turkey uh, by 2300 UK time tonight. They're working in a coordinated fashion with the actual coordinated agency in Turkey directly. Um, as I'm sure the noble lord, indeed all noble lords, appreciate, it's an evolving situation. Even as I was leaving the Foreign Office to come and answer this particular question, tragically we've already seen the casualty figures being reported at close to 2,000 a tad just under, and this is just after a few hours. The earthquake hit, and the noble lord is correct, there were two earthquakes, one of 7.8 magnitude followed by one of 7.5 magnitude, impacting not just Syria and uh, Turkey, but it has felt the impact has been felt further afield, including in Israel and the OPTs. I assure the noble lord that, yes, as my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, have also said, we stand with Turkey, we stand with the agencies working on the ground, importantly the UN within the context of Syria as well, to ensure what is required immediately and indeed for the medium and long term can be addressed quite directly. But I assure the noble lord, as more details evolve, 
um, I shall certainly be happy to update your Lordship's House accordingly. My Lord, the Noble Lord mentioned one particular concern, which is the efforts to get humanitarian aid uh, across the Turkey border to Syria. Syria obviously is a, a particularly difficult situation, so could the Noble Lord tell us what steps the government are taking to support the safe delivery of aid into Syria uh, over the next few days? And how would the government support the implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 2672 during recovery, which facilitates this cross-border aid into Syria? My Lords, as the Noble Lord will know, within the context of the United Nations, first and foremost, we've been working to broaden the scope of humanitarian corridors into Syria. It's regrettable because of Russia's actions that's not been possible. However, we will continue to work with the parameters and the restrictions that apply. But I assure the Noble Lord, for example, with the White Helmets, we're already mobilising additional funding. We are in direct contact with them. I hope also, notwithstanding the issues and challenges which are posed, to be speaking with their direct representative, Riyadh Saleh's deputy, uh, in the coming hours as well to update, um, for me to be updated on what is required. Um, and the Noble Lord was also be aware that within northwest Syria we're working with key NGOs. For example, we've been equipping uh, key NGOs on the ground to ensure that volunteers are already trained to deal with the kind of tragedy which has unfolded. This was, as the Noble Lord uh, folks pointed out, the actual tragedy has taken place where plates meet. And this is a one in a hundred years event, and it has happened, and it happened this morning. My Lords, this, this, this reports and pictures of this uh, earthquake show it to be a truly apocalyptic earthquake on a scale that unprecedented probably in our lifetime. And I'm grateful for the uh, Noble Lord for saying the response that we've had. In the past, the UK had the capacity to provide very fast, comprehensive response and coordinate international action. Do we still have that capacity and are we able to provide real leadership to get to people quickly so that we can save lives and ensure that the needless, endless suffering can be relieved when it really needs to be before it's too late? My Lord, as I assure the Noble Lord, and our response is reflective of that, that we do have the specialists that are required and they've been mobilised very quickly. The important thing the Noble Lord has raised is the importance of coordination on the ground. And we are working directly with the Turkish authorities and the coordinating body to ensure what is required immediately. Those issues are identified and doing so with international partners. I'm sure the Noble Lord has picked up. We have first of about seven or eight countries to respond quite directly. And messages have also been relayed at the highest level to the Turkish government as well. My Lords, having travelled in the areas around southeast Turkey that have been affected to the east of Diyakaba, into Mardin and Turabdin, where the ancient Syriani and Chaldean communities are, I'd be grateful if a noble lord will not lose sight of those very vulnerable people who aren't in the towns and cities but are also deeply affected by these appalling events that the noble lord law folks has described. Can the noble lord the minister tell us two things? Firstly, the Disasters Emergency Committee, the UK Disasters Emergency Committee, usually in these circumstances, coordinates the giving of donations. Is that happening at the moment, and will the UK government provide match funding for every penny and pound that is generously given by UK citizens? And secondly, my lords, given the sanctions that have been imposed on Syria, which the noble Lord, Lord Collins was alluding to, I think, in his remarks, will we ensure that humanitarian needs are met regardless of any sanctions? My lords, on the noble Lord's second point, of course, any sanction that is applied has the ability to and provide the provision to provide humanitarian support. So certainly that's something we will ensure continues to happen. On the Noble Lord's earlier point about vulnerable communities, of course the challenges are immense. When we look in Turkey, as the Noble Lord has pointed out, when we look towards Syria, and of course Aleppo has been impacted in quite a devastating way, notwithstanding the fact the devastation it suffered. So we will seek to prioritise that the distribution of support is given, but it needs the level of coordination. That's why I've alluded to what we're doing both with the uh, aid agencies on the ground in Turkey, but also with the White Helmets. On the issue of the uh, DEC, um, I assure the Noble that one of the last actions I left with the team as I departed from the Foreign Office was a full submission on the very points that the Noble Lord has raised. I don't have those details with me because it's been a fast-evolving situation, but of course that's high up my agenda and I will update the House accordingly. My 
Lords, I think it's very good news that you've responded so far, uh, if I may say, from my noble friend the Minister. Um, do I take it for granted that the Royal, that the Royal Auxiliary Reserve, which is a wonderful trained people on board specifically for an operation like this, are totally involved? And also, uh, do we intend to send out a field hospital, which will be of great, great use, highly set up, well trained people on board? My Lords, I assure my noble friend we are looking at ensuring there is a whole of government response. So every asset and support that we can provide to the Turkey government, as well as uh, the, to assist the situation on the ground in Syria, will be provided. In terms of additional support, um, I don't yet, and those details are being finalised. And as they are, as the requirements are made very clear to us, we will deploy what is necessary to ensure the relief efforts can be met. My lords, my lords, I'd like to thank the noble lord for giving us uh, an update, and uh, he can appreciate the magnitude of this earthquake. It's truly devastating and terrifying. Um, and there are many, many, um, and I include myself, uh, fat people in the, uh, the Turkish diaspora in this country, who are personally affected by this tragedy. Can I ask him what um, support the government can give to the diaspora here, who are desperately trying to find out what's happening to their family and friends in Turkey. Communications are very uh, hampered by the sheer uh, scale of this disaster and also the terrible weather. The terrible snow. Uh, people are under uh, many feet of snow uh, in ten cities have been densely populated. Cities have been affected. So the diaspora over here are desperate for news. What help can we um, give, can the government give, to try and uh, support the communities here who are trying to find out more information? Yeah. My Lord, sir, first of all, may I totally, and I'm sure I speak for all noble lords, associate ourselves totally with extending condolences to, to the British Turkish uh, diaspora here, of which the noble lady is a very exemplary part, but also using her good offices to see, and I quite welcome her direct advice and input into what more can be done. Um, I will certainly uh, get back to her with further details as they evolve. My understanding is in Turkey itself. Certainly, in the ten cities impacted, the communications are still stood up. We are able to get information both in and out, but we will look to see how we can strengthen some of the communication channels. And if the noble lady can identify particular problems which are being encountered, whether it's within the scope of the FCDO or other government departments, we will look to assist. My lords, what, what are we doing about aerial damage assessment? Now we're not in the EU. I presume we haven't got access to the Copernicus satellite. Uh, how are we uh, coping with that, and are we coordinating with our European neighbour? My Lord, the EU have also mobilised in this effect, and what I can assure the noble lord, of course, as I said earlier, we're coordinating with all our international partners, and importantly, that also includes members of the European Union. Lord, we're now <laughs> the Damage has been considerable in Diyarbakir, in Turkey, which, which I previously visited. It's right on the border with Iran. Has there been any reports of damage in Iran? And if so, are we helping them? My Lord, spef specifically on Iran, I, I will have to update the noble Lord. What I am aware of, that the impacts have been felt, certainly, as I said earlier, further afield, uh, particularly in parts of the Middle East. Uh, thankfully, even in places such as Lebanon, which is a very fragile country at the moment, the impact has been limited, uh, but we are continuing to monitor the situation. Tragically, what has happened is after the earthquake, which hit at 4 o'clock this morning, which was probably the worst time, and I was being updated on the net effect on buildings and how they fold it, which is called, I believe, the pancake effect, where they collapse on each other. Um, that impact felt further afield in places like Lebanon, which is extremely fragile would also be very devastating. But I will update, as the details emerge in what is an evolving situation, as I said earlier, I would look to update your Lordship's house. My Lords, uh, some years ago, I worked in a, a refugee camp al along the Euphrates, very close to the epicentre, and it's impossible not to be moved by the brisk, unfussy and uncomplaining way in which Turkey has handled the arrival of millions of Syrian refugees into that territory. The United Kingdom is one of the perhaps the uh, most engaged supporter of Syrian refugees on the borders of Syria. Uh, can we use, uh, uh, leverage that status uh, and 
transfer our aid to the Syrians who are now fleeing from this second devastation. My Lord, my noble friend is of course correct. The United Kingdom has been and is the third largest bilateral donor to the Syrian crisis, having committed over £3.8 billion pounds to date, our largest ever response to the humanitarian crisis. We are supporting but, uh, Turkey, we're supporting Lebanon and indeed Jordan when it comes to the issue of Syrian refugees. The impact of those seeking to leave Syria from this devastation is not yet clear, but we stand very ready to help those within Syria and Turkey uh, in terms of the support they need. But as I've said, and I'm sure noble lords appreciate it, it is a situation which occurred this morning. We've responded to the immediate response as required by the information we're receiving in a coordinated fashion, and we will continue to do so.